wanna talk? So let's talk. Welcome, my friends. It's Talk to Solomon time. That's me, Stan Solomon, my co-host. Chief Steve. Former police chief Steve Davis, and from the great state of Alabama, our financial guru, Greg W. Howard. Hey, Greg. Hey, good evening. Uh, our guest of honor is Major General Jerry Curry, U.S. Army retired. General, how are you, sir? I am super. How are you doing? We are fine, and it's always a pleasure to hear your cheerful voice. Uh, I want to start with a question. Do you think General Allen retired voluntarily, or do you think he's another case of a patriot being forced out so they, he can be replaced by an Obama bot? He's probably being forced out, but uh, after what he has been through, I wouldn't be surprised uh, if he hasn't walked in also one day and say, listen, I've had it. I've done all I want to do. I don't want to do any more. I want to go home and be with Mama and the kiddos, and goodbye. Well, it, I can appreciate the sentiment and, and understand it, but I believe our country is in desperate need of, as you would say, real leaders in our military because I am convinced that systematically they are rooting out those who believe in their oath to the Constitution and replacing them with hacks that will do exactly as their God, Obama, tells them. Your thoughts? I think that's so. I think that's where we are. I think that's what's happening. Unfortunately, I think it. Uh, when I was on active duty, of course, uh, it was a different set of circumstances. But that's where we are today, and I think that Obama is rooting out those generals who he thinks uh, would stand up uh, 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 and oppose him in the, in the kinds of things uh, that he wants to do and he, that he wants to get away with. Well, I think he wants to take on the American people and disarm them. Uh, let's get Greg in this conversation. Greg? I agree. Uh, first of all, we have to remember that the powers of the commander-in-chief do not extend to war against the American people. However, Obama, in his sick mind, thinks that he can do whatever he wants. I saw a chart on Business Insider the other day. It was uh, 20 questions, two-point questions each, and I took the quiz on behalf of Obama based on his public record. He scored 36 out of 40 possible points for is he a psychopath or not. This puts him at the very high end of psychopath. This man is capable of anything, and it, I, I agree with the general. He is actively right now rooting out the remaining generals who are not controlled by the CFR who will actually say no to him if he tries to make a move against Americans and violate posse comitatus, etc. And uh, at this point, he is a very great danger. I think we should be looking at America as if it were Germany 1933. Chief? Well, the proof is in the pudding. Just look who he hangs out with. He's never had any respect for any military at all. And he's trying to dismantle our military. And right now, um, he's complaining that the, the, the military budget's going to be cut, but he's on vacation. I mean, wh what does that say about his, his love for the military? But he's, he hangs out with rich people, movie stars, famous golfers. But he doesn't hang out with any military leaders. He also hangs out with homosexuals, just not in front of the cameras. Uh, now, let me ask you this. Uh, it, Obama's going to go to Israel. Uh, and I'm sure he's going to demand that the Israelis be disarmed when he comes there because he demands our soldiers be disarmed when he's around. Uh, and they're going to give him the Medal of Distinction. Uh, I think they should give him the Medal of Extinction, a general. I, I like the Extinction. I, <laughs> it has a lot to recommend it. It has a nice sound uh, in my ear. Listen, I don't know. You know, he's avoided going to Israel all these years. And he should have gone there the first year. And now he's finally going to go over there. That man has got uh, something up his sleeve that he intends to pull 
on the Israelis and to pull on the American people and to pull probably on the nations of Europe and the Middle East. But he's up to something, and it's not going to be nice when he finally does it. And he's going to, I guess he can't blame Bush on this one, but he'll sure blame the Israelis for anything that, that uh, goes wrong on this trip. Greg? I find it absolutely an affront that it took him this long to go to our only uh, real ally in the Middle East in terms of a democracy in the Middle East. There's only one democracy in the Middle East, and that is Israel. And they have been our ally for a very long time. Now, in some ways, it has been a bit of a one-way street, but they have served as a powerful check against the spread of Islam and as a checking power against some of the craziness that goes on over there. And Israel has a very important place to most of us who are Christians. It's odd that in America, the Christians support Israel more than the Jews do, and I've never understood that self-hating portion of the Jewish psyche, but uh, it's very common. The fact that he's going there and they're going to give him a medal, uh, I, I, we all know what that's all about. They know that Obama is a sociopath, a narcissist, and they have to feed his ego somehow. Uh, it, uh, it's almost like trying to get the Grinch off the mountain to come down to the hubilation. Uh, he wouldn't come unless there was a check, and I guess Obama wouldn't go unless they promised him some sort of award. What's the old story? If you put a mink coat on a pig, you have a pig with a mink coat. Uh, that's just something you can think about, folks. Uh, Chief? <clears throat> well, the generals and uh, Greg's comments are right on the money. But I just know this. Uh, Obama is a facade. And whatever reason he says, whatever he says while he's there is going to be a big lie. He's just there to put on a show. His real intention is against Israel. He was raised as a Muslim. He believes that the terrorists, which he won't ever call terrorists, are freedom fighters, and Israel is in their way. So whatever he says, whatever he does, is just a big lie. General, we know that this administration, knowing that Egypt is descending into chaos, has sent them uh, the Abrams uh, tanks, has sent them money, has sent them uh, not the very, very latest, but almost the latest jet planes, I think F-16s, um, knowing very well that Niger is the Muslim Brotherhood, the quote-unquote president or, or leaders of that country, but as we've now made an about-face on supporting the Syrian rebels, th they're the same people. The Syrian rebels and those running Egypt are the same people. They're I Islamist extremist, terrorist, murderers, Jew haters, Christian haters, America haters, and I don't know, somebody must have disturbed him while he was, you know, getting something massaged, and, uh, and all of a sudden the United States has, has stopped on the idea of arming and supporting the, uh, the uh, uh, rebels in Syria. Uh, what's happening, or do you have any idea? I don't have any idea of what's happening, but there's a couple of things that I would mention to you. This is just me talking, and that is uh, the, the, the idea that uh, they're going to take F-16s and Abrams tanks and uh, they're going to use those against Israel uh, doesn't make any sense to me. I think they're going to take those tanks and those airplanes and they're going to use them against the rebels that are trying to take over their country. Uh, it was clear from the very beginning when this thing started, the, the Arab Spring business, to me, it was clear anyway, and I said so publicly, that uh, it was obvious that what was going on was that uh, we would not, in fact, we Americans would not, in fact, find ourselves with a government better than Mubarak and more favorable to us than the government of Egypt already was, and that we were going to help the kinds of people who would bring into a radical uh, Muslim element to take over and run that country. And, and that's where we are. That's what's happening in Syria. And that's what's happening throughout the Middle East. Well, we've seen that Tunisia, where this quote-unquote Arab Spring started, their government just resigned. They're in chaos. Libya's in chaos. Egypt's in chaos. Syria's in chaos. Um, the only thing that's still operating are the, uh, the Emirates and, and Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. And, and those are all more or less pro-Western governments. These others are so excited about 
having a chance to be in charge, but they're doing what they do, and that is kill each other, turn on themselves, uh, and they yep. can't keep their mouths shut. General? Yeah, I think that's exactly what, what we're going on. But uh, what I'm suggesting to you is the excuse that we're talking about with these F-16s is uh, we want to be, uh, be, uh, be careful because they may use them on Israel. Uh, they're not thinking Israel. They're thinking Middle East. They're thinking people right there in the, who are, who are the, the ones who are objecting to their taking over the government, the, the Arab Brotherhood, for example. So you're saying that the Muslim Brotherhood is going to use those assets uh, against the Arab, the uh, Egyptian people? Yes. But now we've just heard, and I don't know that, that we verify, but I've heard that the military in Egypt, which even though he's put some of his, his token people in charge, uh, they told him when he said, turn on the people that are revolting the streets and mow them down, they said, drop dead. We're not going to do it. So he doesn't really have the Egyptian military, uh, and they're the ones that have the, the planes, and they're the ones that have the tanks. I don't think that, that those military people will turn on their own people. I think they'll more likely turn on the Muslim Brotherhood and take them out. At least that's my thought. Greg? Well, it's a very dicey situation. It could go either way. It just depends on who, con who is in control. Now, militaries, uh, you know, you roll a few uh, key generals out of the way, and you can, you can change the entire structure of the military. So it, it could very well be used against the Christians and the, you know, the, the Muslim Brotherhood in charge of the country could use the military against the Coptic uh, Christians, which is one group that they desperately want to run out of the country, and many are already fleeing in fear for their lives. Or if you roll a cu and the j military is in fact standing against him right now, to uh, as you said, stand. But if he rolls a couple of key generals, you know they have accidents in their homes, or they have mysterious brake failures on their way to the office, and a key gen a few key generals get replaced, it could change that completely. Also, you know, you change a few key generals, and you suddenly have a force willing to go against Israel, and the treaty is abrogated. Uh, you know, between Israel and Egypt. And might I point out that w Iraq is also destabilizing rapidly, and Afghanistan is going to destabilize just as soon as we're out of there. D don't think the Taliban won't take over that country again very, very quickly. The Mubarak uh, government is intensely corrupt and widely hated. You're talking about the, the uh, current... Government I mean, not, not a Karzai government. I'm Karzai. Kar Karzai government Karzai. is okay. intensely corrupt and widely hated, and uh, it's only going to be a matter of time once we pull the last or uh, draw down our troops far enough that the Taliban will take that country over again. Well, I think uh, Barack Obama is a prime example of declaring victory and leaving. Uh, General, do you, is that in essence what he's done? Yeah, I lost you. I'm sorry. You, you, uh, your voice just went completely okay. bonkers. Uh, what I'm saying is I think Barack Obama has declared victory, and he's leaving uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, and those countries will be right back where they were before we went in and spent all that treasure of lives and money. I think that's right. Uh, that To me, that's been the plan all along. I think that uh, his intention was to turn them back over to the Mus Muslim Brotherhood, and his idea was that he was going to stand there on the sidelines and sort of look the other direction or applaud uh, while terrible things happen. Bad things are coming to the Middle East. They, are, they have started now. It's going to get worse and worse. Uh, we could tamp things down. We could get things under control if we had a president who wanted to do that. But I think as, uh, as he handles domestic affairs in the United States, I do not have the feeling that he really cares or in any way is trying to bring peace, stability uh, to the, the Middle East. Chief? Well, when uh, Greg mentioned uh, the Egyptian president replacing generals with those that would oppose Israel, I was got confused. I thought he was talking about Barack Obama in that comment. It sounded the exactly, same to me. Exactly the same. <clears throat> but but if, if the general's right, and, the, and Egypt's, Egypt's going to use the F-16s and other weaponry against its own people, not Israel, I still would think that Israel has to be concerned because uh, for every F-16 that Egypt has, they need Egypt or Israel needs two to at least two to combat that. So they're still in a little bit of a pickle because we're given their enemy uh, very sophisticated weaponry that could be used against Israel. No question at all. All right, I want to 
shift gears a bit here. General, in New York City, after this tragedy that happened uh, with this uh, uh, guy that killed the kids in Connecticut, after three, I think, or maybe four instances where people were shoved in front of trains and killed uh, by deranged individual. Now there's an article from the New York Post called Scoop the Nuts, where New York is going to sweep and take all of the obviously mentally ill people that they before pushed hard to turn loose from all the institutions so they could be out in the streets doing damage to themselves and others, and now they're going to re-institutionalize them in some way or another. Even though it's not a military question, uh, but it's a management question, I, for one, think it's a hell of a good idea. Now, the fact is they would probably include me in that, in that sweep because they would think my ideas are insane. And leaving that aside for the moment, these people that are walking around doing what they do, uh, obviously mentally deranged, isn't it the right thing? to put those people in a protective environment rather than leave them on the street for fear that it might be violating their right to be crazy? <laughs> Listen, this is, this is, this is a, uh, this is a dicey situation uh, that you're talking about. Uh, and I have worked by the way, personally one-on-one -on -one with a lot of homeless <laughs> and, and uh, they're a strange breed of people. They have, they have a lot of problems. No question about it. Uh, they have a lot of mental problems on top of all the other problems that they have, and you have to be careful with them. The problem you have is that people like Bloomberg will have an enemies list, and I fear that he will simply scoop up all of his enemies, like Saul Solomon, for example, or Stan Solomon. He'll scoop them all up, and they will go into the institutions uh, uh, along with the, the bad guys. You know, there's uh, we, we've seen a lot of history on this. The uh, Chinese and the uh, the Russians do it very effectively. Right, they put them all in 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 uh, psychiatric hospitals for their own good, and they're never heard from again. Or they lobotomize them, and they're not able to be heard from. Like one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Uh, Greg, remember the story of Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Uh, General stole my thunder a little bit on this, but he's exactly right. It was the most popular thing to do in the former Soviet Union was to declare, if you didn't agree with communism, you must be insane. Therefore, you were put, uh, you were used for psychiatric drug experiments, you were institutionalized, and you were put into what was known as the Gulag Archipelago. And you just disappeared into a string of prison camps in Siberia, etc. We have to be careful if we start giving the government broad authority to put people away without the right of habeas corpus. This is why I have been raging a one-man campaign, it seems, at times, on Twitter against the NDAA and other powers of government that are extra-constitutional. We cannot afford to have this kind of power in the hands of a madman. And I will not back down from my statement that Obama is a madman. He has surrounded himself by equally insane people, and they are very, very dangerous with the power that they have. Chief, <clears throat> when I first started my law enforcement career, uh, this, the way it was, what you're describing it is the way that it was. There was an actual process for uh, people that had mental illness and were wandering the streets to be taken in by the police and taken in for an examination. And then they had the right, though, as Greg mentioned, they, they, were, they were put in front of a judge. So a panel, a panel of doctors, psychiatric doctors, would decide whether or not they, were, they were, had psychiatric problems whether they need medicine or not. And most of them could be, be manageable and live a life on their own without uh, being institutionalized if, as long as they took their medicine. And so the court had the authority to mandate that they take their medicine. If they didn't, their family would call us or we would find them somewhere. We'd take them back to the hospital. They go through the process again. There are also places like we had a central state hospital that was a, not, a, a, like a, an in and out hospital that could help manage the, the medicine that these people needed to take. So the, that worked until the ACLU came in and ruined it. The liberals ruined it by saying that all those people had rights to do whatever they wanted to do, and now they're out wandering the streets with, psych, with psychiatric uh, illnesses. But those the, that haven't been the, killed. The bottom line, right? The bottom line is though, is we do need a method where the government can round them up, but not the government's in control of what happens to them. 
that when a process should take place where doctors are involved, a court's involved, and also the, the, the people had a right to have an attorney. So they could be represented in court by an attorney. So it, the process worked very, very well. We should get back to that. All right, General, I think you'd agree with that, would you not? I would agree with that, Steve. You're right on target. I exactly come to, I come to the very same conclusion. You cannot trust this government to have broad, sweeping powers. They have got to be controlled. Uh, they have got to be, they, they've got to have the various parts of the government, including the judiciary, looking over their shoulder, looking down their sleeves, because uh, the, this government, I'm afraid, cannot be trusted with the power and the authority that it has, let alone what it would like to assume, subsume. Well said. All right, well, on that note, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back. I want to discuss with you the differences between a, a company president on a plane uh, who had a derogatory remark to make about a child and Alec Baldwin, who had a derogatory remark to make about uh, a reporter. We'll be back shortly with more right here on Talk to Solomon. You have a computer if you're alive today, which means you have a hard drive, which means it's going to break down. Mosey, the backup people, for thousands, for Stan, for thousands of people, for tens of thousands of people, is simply common sense. You go to cpnlive.com, click on the icon for Mosey, the backup people, and sign up. It's, it's just a few dollars a month. Let me tell you something. We had a break-in. They stole our whole computer. You know what? When they take the computer, you can't recover anything, but we had Mosey. We had the backup. We were able to restore everything simply by buying another computer. CPNLive.com, click on the icon for Mosey to back up people and give yourself common sense, peace of mind, great value, the best thing you've ever done. Sooner or later, it's going to be. Mosey, the backup people. I like to eat. You like to eat? We all do. And usually we run to the grocery store, we run the convenience store, uh, or we have something in the fridge. But power's been out in parts of this country in the last few weeks. Uh, we don't know what's going to come down the pike economically. Smart people are putting in food. Alpine Air Gourmet Reserves is a line of foods that you can put away that will last for a very long time. You know, they say eat what you store and store what you eat. This is great tasting stuff, healthy for you, a full line. You go to our website, cpnlive.com, and click on the button for Alpine Air Gourmet Reserves and see all the different things we have. This is good tasting food. It's reasonably priced. It will last. And it's worth its weight in gold if a problem arises. I know you don't think there's going to be anything that goes wrong. Actually, you do. This is smart. This is smart insurance. This is smart preparation. This is smart thinking. You have kids, you have a spouse, you have parents, you have dependents, uh, you have an appetite. All those things can be addressed by a, a, a frugal but smart investment in Alpine Air Gourmet Reserves. Try them out. You will be tickled to death with the taste of them. You know what? In many cases, people start to eat this and they think, heck, this tastes better and costs less than what you're going to the grocery store to buy. CPMLive.com. Check it out. Hey, my name is Stan Solomon, and you know if I have something to say, I'll say it. And I'll only tell you the truth because I'm a Republican, not a Democrat. Democrats always lie. Republicans only lie half the time. I don't lie at all. This is the fuel mule. It's an extraordinary product that was developed by a friend of mine, an engineer, and it increases the fuel mileage on your vehicle. If you have a combustion engine, this will increase your mileage by 10 to 20 percent. It bolts around your fuel line. You can install it yourself or have your mechanic do it. It is an extraordinary item and it flat works. I've been using it for more than 10 years. It's increased my mileage on every vehicle I put it on. And by the way, it will last forever 
You can get rid of your vehicle, just take it off and put on the next one. Go to cpnlive.com. You'll have more information there. You can order it right there. We absolutely guarantee you'll be satisfied. The Fuel Mule. It's a way to kick down your cost of fuel and kick up your mileage. Don't you love the name? I thought of it. The Fuel Mule. Let me ask you a question. Do you like being sick? I have in my hand an incredible product. It's called TR10 Super Colloidal Silver. TR10 stands for a trace to the negative 10th power. The particles in this silver product are six to eight angstroms, six to eight ten billionths of a meter. Now listen to me. Silver has been the magic bullet for all of human existence. The Egyptians used silver instruments. We use silverware. They put silver in your teeth because nothing can grow on silver. Silver will kill anything but liberalism. I'm working on that. This product, you go to cpnlive.com, buy one quarter of this product, it will last you for a very long time. Anytime you feel like you've been exposed to something bad, take some of this product, spray it in your mouth, or take a little bit and gargle it, swallow it, it will kill any pathogen. The average antibiotic kills 10 to 20 different pathogens. This product will kill 700 plus. Do yourself a favor, do your family a favor, do your doctor a favor, he's tired of seeing you. Get Super Colloidal Silver, go to cpnlive.com, order the product, it's $29.95 plus shipping, I think it's $39.95 delivered any place in America right to your door, it's worth 10 times that. Check it out, if you're not 100% happy, just return it and we'll give you your money back.